Hi, welcome to episode two of Knit Talk with a Tech Editor. I'm Megan of the Unapologetic Knitter and I am a tech editor. Uh, I wanted to say a big thank you to those of you who watched my ep first episode two weeks ago where we talked about ease um, and also a huge thank you to everybody who submitted discussion topics for the future. Uh, there were a lot of them and all of them were awesome and I have a long list of things to work from over the next several several months. <laughs> um, but what stuck out to me most was questions about modifications, um, whether it was modifications for your body or modifications based on gauge. And I love both of them. So um, that sort of set today's topic. So before we start to look at how to make modifications, we need to understand gauge and how it can impact our um, finished projects. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about swatching, the different methods that are available, um, and how variations in your gauge can impact a finished project. So we're gonna start with the very basic, um, knitting a swatch flat. Uh, this is perfect for projects that are worked flat like scarves or shawls um, or even garments or accessories that are worked flat and then seamed. Um, when you are knitting a swatch flat, you want to be sure that you are using the same yarn and same needles that you plan to use for your project. Um, how we hold our needles that are say different lengths can impact our stitches. Um, and of course, different fibers or things like that can, um, like different fiber contents or weights of yarn can impact our gauge pretty significantly. So you want to be able to use the yarn for your project to swatch. The larger the project, the larger I think your swatch should be. If you're going to knit, say, a scarf that is only um, six or eight inches wide, you can do a fairly small swatch. I still recommend casting on more stitches than there are stitches in your gauge, just so that you don't have any discrepancies in edge stitches when you're counting. Um, for example, if your pattern is 18 stitches over four inches, I would probably cast on 24 so that when you measure your 18 stitches, you don't have to account for any edge stitches. Um, I would also cast on extra stitches beyond the 24 so you can put a nice garter ridge edge on it, um, garter stitch edge. This just helps to prevent your swatch from rolling since stockinette loves to roll. Um, you also always want to swatch in the fabric that the pattern calls for. If it calls for stockinette, easy peasy, knit on the right side, purl on the wrong side. If it calls for a different um, stitch fabric, it's usually included in the pattern. So if it says over seed stitch, you'll likely find instructions for seed stitch, whether it's written or a chart. Um, you just wanna make sure that you're following the fabric that they're wanting you to create just in case there are any variances in your stockinette stitch versus seed stitch or lace work. You want to use the fabric that the designer has designed for because they'll have built in the requirements for that. Okay, flat swatching I think is fairly straightforward, has very specific uses. A lot of people want to knit swatches for projects in the round flat because it's easy. Um, I have discovered that over my 20 years of knitting that that is not going to necessarily lead you to success. Um, so when it comes to working projects in the round, we have some different options and in my opinion, some different requirements. So um, very often, I'm sorry, I have a hair here. It's just tickling. I'll try to ignore it. Okay. Um, very often, you will see a pattern that calls for swatching in the round and we think of swatching in the round like a full circular on a 16 inch needle and speed swatching where you're working across the right side of the work only and carrying the working yarn behind it um, to be comparable. And I would say yes-ish. Uh, I think it depends on what you're making. If you are making a smaller project like a cowl or a hat uh, where you're not going to have a ton of weight on the project and it you want it to be fitted but perhaps not exactly exactly the same size aka there's a little variance in it I think you can do a speed swatch 
Um, it uses less yarn. It's certainly a lot faster. Plus, it's kind of fun to put a little bit of fringe on the edge of your swatch. If you're going to be knitting something larger, like a sweater, I, I can't think of a, a better example, a sweater <laughs> or a really large cowl, you know, something that stacks and is quite heavy, I really, really recommend knitting a full circle in your yarn using the needles that you plan to use for your project. If the cable's a little shorter, that's fine. Um, like for example, this is on a 16 inch circular and I think that would make a perfectly fine swatch. Um, I would probably knit mine quite a bit taller than this uh, to make sure that my row gauge is accurate. But when I compared these two, which are knit on the exact same needle um, with the exact same yarn, I found that my row gauge was shorter knitting in the round even though this is meant to mimic knitting in the round but the stitches were quite a bit wider um, three quarters of a stitch wider like overall than this so i think you want to use the method that you're going to use the most in a sweater or your project um, to get the most accurate result you can absolutely use this method knitting a full circumference circle for a cowl or a hat, but I think you'll just be frustrated because it feels like you're casting on a fairly significant portion of that project when you're casting on as many stitches as you need to go around a circular needle. Um, I learned a lot about my own gauge just using the same yarn on the same needle, working all three different ways. So I will include some information about what I did for this exercise, just in case you want to try it for yourself. Um, if this used just over a half skein of yarn to do all three swatches. So if you've got a skein lying around and you want to learn more about your gauge, um, I think it's a fun little exercise. So there is a caveat to swatching in the round um, using either uh, the speed watch swatching method or the 16 inch circular method. And that is for small circumference items. So this is a sock that I have actually cast on, um, but this is exactly how I would knit the swatch as well. Um, the reason being is you could speed swatch, like just like this, but when you're doing something like a small circumference like magic loop or um, DPNs or like the two circular methods, there are several other methods, but those are the ones I'm the most comfortable with. Um, we hold our needles and our yarn really differently. And I think it has to do with how much of the project we actually cover. I'm, I'm really guessing, but if I was to knit a 16 inch circular um, at this gauge, which is around 32 stitches over four inches, I feel like it would be a lot larger than the gauge that I actually get when I work a swatch for a small circumference. Um, you may have started to see knitting patterns where you're working a sweater entirely in the round, in which case, yes, you would absolutely swatch using this nice big method. Um, but you see the note that says you may want to go up a needle size for your sleeves. And that's because we do tend to knit smaller circumferences on DPNs or Magic Loop at a tighter gauge. So um, if you wanted to treat yourself to a little bit more experimentation, I would say use the yarn that you are using for this little exercise if you do it, and also work it using the Magic Loop or the DPNs method, and just see if you notice a difference in your gauge. Um, I know I certainly did. So <laughs> um, that's sort of covering the basics of swatching and how best to use it. Um, these are of course just my opinions. You can do what you feel most comfortable with. Um, but now I want to talk a little bit about, I've got my notes behind me here, a little bit about variances in gauge and the impact it can have on your project. Um, so I'm going to use working in the round, um, as an example, just because I do so much work in the round. If you cast on a cowl or no, let's say a hat. Let's say a hat, I have a hat right here. Let's say you cast on a hat, just like this. Um, and the pattern's gauge is 18 stitches over four inches, very common for a worsted weight. And the hat is 80 stitches around. That means your finished size is gonna be about 17 and three quarter inches. Um, if you're curious about how I found that, or how I know that, so you take your total stitches cast on, so let's say 80, 
um, and you divide it by your gauge, which is 18 stitches. And then you multiply that number by four because we measured those 18 stitches over four inches. So 80 divided by 18 multiplied by four is 17.75 with just a tiny amount of rounding in there. So that gives us that finished size of hat. And if you've matched gauge, perfect. If you swatch and your gauge is smaller, meaning it takes you more stitches to make four inches, so let's say 20 stitches over four inches, your hat will be smaller. You lose about one and three quarters of an inch. So 20 stitches over four inches would give you a 16 inch finish circumference on a hat of 80 stitches. Which doesn't sound like a ton if you're knitting um, even say a tubular scarf or um, a shawl, it doesn't sound like it's a really big difference. But as the number of stitches increases, your differential kind of multiplies. So if we have the same gauge of 18 stitches over four inches and you're knitting a sweater and the instructions have you cast on 180 stitches, that's a 40 inch circumference. Um, if your gauge is smaller, and you have 20 stitches over four inches, just same example as the hat, but over the 180 stitches, your variance is four inches. So instead of having a 40 inch sweater, you have a 36 inch sweater. Uh, so variances in gauge can impact the finish sizes fairly dramatically, even if the number doesn't look like it's that much, right? Two stitches over 18 doesn't sound like it's a lot, but it can equal up to four inches, five inches, depending on the number of stitches. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you swatch for your gauge and that you match gauge. Um, row gauge is a bit of a different beast, and I'm gonna talk about that in one of our videos about modifications. Um, but stitch gauge is the one that you really can't fudge too much when you're knitting a garment that needs to fit. So I think that kind of covers what I really wanted to talk about today, just making sure that your gauge is accurate and understanding what can happen if your gauge is not accurate. Um, so in the future videos that I have over the coming weeks, we're going to be talking about modifying patterns. Uh, specifically modifying patterns for um, your body size. So not necessarily modifying it based on gauge, although we are gonna talk, a we are gonna have a video about that too. Um, but I wanna talk about modifying sweaters for arm sizes. So let's say you've chosen your sweater um, as a 40 inch circumference, just to use the reference from a few minutes ago. Um, but your sleeves on that sweater size are too big or too small. I want to talk to you about how you can modify three different types of sweaters. So the first video we will talk about modifying for a drop shoulder sweater. Uh, the following week we're going to talk about modifying for a top down um, yoked sweater like a circular you often see for uh, color work or textural patterns um, and in that same one we're going to cover a question that i had specifically about modifying necklines so that'll be a big one um, and then the final week we'll be talking about modifying for a raglan style sweater so each of the methods is a little bit different it all comes down to math so have your calculator ready i will try to have some real world examples for you that we can work on and look at actual numbers um, and then the week following those sweater ones we're going to talk about modifying for gauge i have knit up a little hat pattern and i think we're going to use this as an example this is a worsted weight and I'm going to talk to you about how to modify for gauge and what little pitfalls to look for so that you don't get halfway through and get stuck with your modifications. Okay, um, I like to give credit where credit is due. So this is the Athenaeum cowl that I knit up with my lovely friend Sarah of Marie & Co. Wool Goods. Um, this is a, I think you might call it a bandana style cowl. You wear it kind of like a point. Um, 
but it's worked on the bias to mimic the shaping of a boomerang shawl, so it's a lot of fun. It uses one skein of her classic sock yarn and one skein of her lace wisp yarn, so if you ever get a chance to check out her work, it's just lovely. I will provide a link in the description below the video. And I know today's video was quick and dirty, going through the steps of understanding what swatching method to use. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, please feel free to leave a question in the comment section and I will do my best to respond to you as quickly as I can. And if you have ideas for future discussion topics, please feel free to submit a discussion form. I have a link in the video below for that as well. So thank you very much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about um, swatching and how best to do that. And I look forward to helping you in future videos where we talk about modifications. Happy knitting.